If you live in the southeastern United States, chances are you've seen these giant grasshoppers, sometimes in very large quantities. These massive insects can take over any area, eating any plant in sight, and they hold a toxic secret that you might not be aware of. But are these creatures pests to be feared, or something completely different? Today, we are exploring a marsh habitat in South Florida to search for these grasshoppers and answer these questions and much more. After a little bit of searching, it didn't take long to find one. All right, I have found a spot where these Eastern lubber grasshoppers are absolutely abundant. In fact, there's actually one right here. Ooh. <laughs> All right, children, this absolutely giant creature right here is the Eastern Lubber Grasshopper, which is our most massive species of grasshopper here in Florida, and one of the largest species of grasshoppers in North America. While this species is absolutely huge, they cannot fly, and they actually don't have very much jumping power. This is because, as you might be able to infer by this species' Latin name, Romalia microptera, this species' wings are too short for it to be able to fly, and its body is also way too massive. Because of that, this species also lacks a lot of the jumping force you might associate with grasshoppers. You might think that this puts this species at a lot of risk at being predated, but somehow, some way, this has become one of the most common grasshopper species here in Florida. This is because, despite being very easy to catch, these grasshoppers are basically inedible. They are highly poisonous to be eaten, but no worries, these things are not poisonous to the touch or are not venomous if it were to like bite you, which this thing would definitely not bite you. The poison is only an internal defense to prevent them from being eaten. Most grasshoppers are also readily pretty good at not being eaten. While most grasshoppers are not poisonous, they will still secrete a very bad tasting fluid out of their mouths made out of their digestive enzymes as well as decaying plant matter. But this species, because of its large size and flightlessness, takes that to the next level being very toxic. And they are not afraid to advertise that either. The bright colors that you see on these are what are called aposematic coloration or warning colors that let a predator know not to mess with this eastern lubber grasshopper as it is not going to end well for the predator trying to eat one of these. And the nymphs, which are even smaller and have even less jumping power, are even more boldly colored than this, having more black on them with yellow and red stripes. These things are distinctive and unmistakable throughout their entire life cycle. As adults, all the individuals look roughly like this, though the colors themselves are quite variable. This individual is actually quite orange. I've seen some get more on the redder side, some get more of a golden yellow, and even some be more of a pale greenish yellow. But the overall pattern is relatively the same, and those wings, being reddish in coloration, holds constant across pretty much all individual adults. This individual is a male. I can tell because he has a subgenital plate, a superanal plate, and cerci. A female in that place at the end of the abdomen where all those genitalia of the male are, would have an ovipositor, which is what the female uses to lay eggs. Female eastern lovers are surprisingly even larger than this. Not by much, though. Some grasshoppers, the females are very much larger than the males. On the lubber grasshoppers, there's not too much of a disparity, and I've actually seen some larger sized males be larger than some smaller sized females. Though on average, the females are larger. Now, even though this thing is highly toxic and has an almost menacing look to its face, these, like basically all grasshoppers and most orthoptera, or the group that the grasshoppers, the crickets, and the katydids are in, are completely herbivorous. In one open grassy area, in basically any habitat you could find, but especially these kind of marshy areas, you can find hundreds of these eastern lubber grasshoppers, climbing the sides of trees, climbing tall grasses, and hopping on the ground where they can single-handedly eat almost entire fields of grass. Now these are not like the locusts or anything, these things are not pests. They're just doing their job out here keeping these plant populations in the marsh out of control. Without these eastern lubber grasshoppers, these marsh habitats would probably not survive. These are super important pieces to the ecosystem, and even though you might think they're pests because there's hundreds of them just hopping all around, they're just doing their job out here, and they are very seasonal, so the adults are only doing their damage to the ecosystem for a few months out of the year. The rest of the year, these things are either nymphs or you won't see them around because the eggs are still developing. Right now, there's a lot of mating pairs of these eastern lubber grasshoppers around, 
and for whatever reason while they're mating, they make a very distinctive sound. They will beat their wings together, but outside of that, these eastern lover grasshoppers are pretty much silent. They don't stridulate like crickets, katydids, and some other grasshoppers do. Look at how impressively large this grasshopper is. I could understand why some people might be scared of this species, but in my opinion, the eastern lover grasshopper is a super cute species and is honestly one of the best gateway species if you're scared of handling insects. Because as you can see, they are extremely calm, they're easy to catch, easy to handle, large and easy to keep track of, and super interactive. Alright, I hope you enjoyed learning about the giant, toxic, eastern lubber grasshopper. But unfortunately now, it is time to release this absolutely gorgeous eastern lubber grasshopper right back into the environment. If you enjoyed learning about one of the largest grasshoppers you'll ever see, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we learn about one of the smallest you'll ever see. Enjoy!